Oil pulling versus brushing. Oil pulling comes from ancient medicine and involves swishing oil, usually coconut oil, in your mouth for 15 to 30 minutes before spitting it out. Some people swear by it, and there are some studies suggesting potential dental health benefits. Let's talk. Hi everyone, my name is Whitney and I'm a registered dental hygienist here to answer the question, can oil pulling replace brushing your teeth? And the evidence-based answer is no. However, if you wanna do it, swish with coconut oil in addition to brushing and flossing, that's fine. Just don't expect it to replace brushing and flossing. I've done a couple oil pulling videos on here before, mostly listing the pros and cons of swishing with oil, which I'll link below if you wanna learn more. It's always good to know about both the potential risks and the potential benefits. But for the purpose of this video, Video. I just want to explain how, although some small studies do suggest that oil pulling may help reduce bacteria in your mouth, freshen breath, and even alleviate dry mouth, it's important to know there is no solid evidence to suggest it prevents cavities or gum disease in the way that brushing and flossing can. So from an evidence-based perspective, yes, it can be used in conjunction with brushing and flossing, sure, but can it replace brushing and flossing? No. Now, one more thing to think about, brushing takes two minutes. You're supposed to brush your teeth for two minutes twice a day and floss at least once a day. Whereas the studies we have on oil pulling, they actually show, to experience the potential benefits, oil pulling requires about 20 minutes of swishing, give or take. I bring this up because if you can commit to a 20 minute oil pulling routine, you should be able to easily commit to two minutes of brushing as well, right? In my previous videos, this is where everyone gets mad in the comments saying, nobody said you have to do it for the full 20 minutes. Well, the research we have literally says that. I always link all of my sources below. You you can always read the studies yourself. And really why I'm making this video, touching on the oil pulling topic again, is to reiterate the differences between evidence-based and anecdotal-based. This tends to be where lots of the arguments in the comments section stem from. So hear me out. Just because something seems to work for some people does not mean it will work for everyone or that it's actually effective, right? You might hear from a bunch of people that swear that oil pulling cured some disease in their mouth. If so, that's great to hear. However, it's very important important to understand that these claims are considered anecdotal, word of mouth, hearing it from person to person, because the same goes for those who say, yeah, I switched for months and months with oil, but it changed nothing, right? Just depends on who is online telling their stories and who is online amplifying their stories. We all know how the videos and the comments with the most engagement get the most amplified. So if everyone is excited about a comment that said something shocking, like oil pulling cured my cavities, which is misinformation, that comment quickly gets amplified because every Everyone is pressing like on it, sharing it, commenting on it, etc. And with social media research, studies actually show that when you read something enough times, you start to actually believe it, whether it's true or not. So we can't just trust word of mouth, right? I'm not saying people are lying. I'm saying that without actual scientific evidence, we can't be certain that the cure someone claims about something actually came from the specific thing they believed caused it. For this example, maybe someone started oil pulling and noticed better gum health. But what if because because they were so on track with oil pulling and upping their daily dental hygiene routine, they also started flossing better as well as changing up their diet, started eating slightly healthier, or stopped clenching and grinding their teeth at night. There's so many variables. It's hard to say one thing cured or changed something in your health without analyzing everything that may have contributed to it. I'm not dismissing it. I'm just explaining why we rely on evidence-based care in healthcare settings, such as hospitals, doctor's offices, and dental offices. Evidence based recommendations and evidence-based treatments don't just go off one person's story or a few people's stories for something to be considered effective in healthcare. It needs solid peer-reviewed research that shows it works consistently across different people in different controlled settings. And right now, oil pulling just doesn't have that level of evidence. Again, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not dismissing it. It might help in some ways. But what I'm saying is that there is absolutely no evidence to suggest that it can be a substitute for brushing and flossing which do have decades of strong research proving their effectiveness. So again, if you wanna try oil pulling, you think it would be fun? Sure, there are potential benefits such as bacterial reduction in the mouth, dry mouth relief, and mild stain prevention. But you just gotta remember that it does not replace brushing and flossing and seeing your dentist regularly. I hope I don't sound like a broken record. I know I probably do, but I'm really just trying to get the point across. And before we go, it's important to note the three potential risks because as a healthcare professional, I need to tell you everything that can go wrong if you do it wrong. Such as number one, aspiration risk. 
Accidentally inhaling the oil could lead to lipoid pneumonia. So if you are swishing and swishing and you inhale, that could be bad. Don't do that. Number two, jaw strain. Swishing with anything for 20 minutes straight can aggravate TMJ issues and cause jaw fatigue. So if you already have jaw problems, be careful swishing too hard, whether it's coconut oil or mouthwash or even chewing gum. If you're chewing gum too often, all that stuff can make your TMJ issues worse. And number three, I come from a family of plumbers, so I feel obligated to remind you all to never spit coconut oil in your sink. Over time, it will solidify and cause serious plumbing issues. Always spit into the trash when you're done. In all, I hope this video helps equip you with the knowledge you need if you're interested in oil pulling. I'm all for keeping an open mind when it comes to new ways to improve oral health, but here's the reality. About 40% of Americans do not brush their teeth twice a day. That's a large percentage of people not doing the most basic prevention method. That's why in my previous oil pulling videos, I've been pretty apprehensive simply because the priority should always be brushing twice a day and flossing once a day before adding anything extra to your routine. If you're already consistent with your brushing and flossing and looking for ways to further improve your oral health, great. Adding in oil pulling generally can't hurt. But for those looking for shortcuts, trying to replace brushing and flossing with oil pulling, that's where I have to draw the line. Just like mouthwash, I'll link my mouthwash videos below, swishing with any liquid does not replace brushing and flossing. You must manually remove plaque and biofilm from your teeth every day with a toothbrush and floss. Once you've got that down, feel free to add oil pulling, mouthwash, or any other extras to your routine. Hopefully this all clarifies where I'm coming from when I make videos about new social media trends. Again, not that oil pulling itself is new, it's been around for centuries, but since it's resurfacing online, it's getting talked about more. I'm happy to provide this evidence-based perspective for those of you who want it. In conclusion, I'm not against oil pulling. If you enjoy it, I'm not telling you not to do it. I just wanna make sure everyone knows it's considered an addition to your brushing and flossing routine, not a replacement. Wow, I am a broken record. But having said all of this, if you need help creating the perfect home care routine for your unique oral health needs, be sure to check out my free oral care guide. It's a complete action plan designed to help you prevent issues and maintain a healthier and happier smile. Inside, you'll find step-by-step -step tutorials on brushing, flossing, and tongue scraping so you can be confident that your daily routine is effective and done with the right technique. I hope this video helped you. Please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications if it did. And if you want even more Teeth Talk, you can visit my website, teethtalkgirl.com, and hang out with me on Instagram at teethtalkgirl. Thank you for listening. Peace, love, and teeth.